We have a great show today. You're going to learn some great things for your horses. You're going to love this. My guest is Gary Wade. I am so glad to have you on the show because you Happy have a wonderful, wonderful machine mm -hmm. that works for horses that have any kind of pain. We're going to talk about that. But before we get into what's called the equine. It's the horse magnetic pulser. Okay, not equine. No. Horse magnetic pulser. pulser. Yes. Got it right. Okay. And you came up with this, but let's talk about your background. What brought you to invent this machine? Uh, I'm a physicist by training and uh, like technical stuff and I like medical stuff and blah blah. A friend of mine had a very bad uh, shoulder injury where his ligaments over the rotator cuff area went out were all shredded and damaged and the surgeons decided they had to have reconstructive surgery because he couldn't raise his arm up over this without great right. pain and whatnot. And so two days before the operation he came down with pneumonia. So he was laying at home on his bed in the couch, you know, recovering from the pneumonia. And he had this little magnetic coil thing from Sodium Instruments out of Canada, which he used for pain relief. He'd just place it up on his shoulder and lay there and let the thing do its firing every three, three, half seconds. It fired a pulse. And he got pain relief from that. And so it's a was, magnet? It's a coil. Just nothing more really than about a three inch in diameter coil, about an inch thick. And you just put it over the wound oh, okay. or the damaged area and whatnot. And he it relieved his pain. Well, he was there for like five or six days, effectively, and doing it for like five or six hours a day, you know, gung-ho. And at the end of that time, he went into the kitchen, I think, to grab uh, some coffee and whatnot, and he suddenly realized when he was moving around in his arm that he now had full range of motion and he had no pain and he had his strength back. He said, well, what the heck happened? So he tells me this story, and after I heard that, I thought, well, I'd read, a, read Dr. Uh, Robert Becker's book, The Body Electric, and he had made a whole bunch of observations about regeneration of tissue and healing and whatnot. Anyway, I came quickly to the conclusion that fibroblast cells, which normally when tissue gets damaged, fibroblast cells migrate up to the damaged area and they sort of make an emergency patch to hold you together. It becomes scar tissue. Okay. Whenever we okay. get badly racked or injured, it becomes scar tissue. Mm -hmm. Well, I decided that somehow the magnetic coil pulsing device had somehow converted the scar tissue into healthy tissue somehow. So I got a hold of a pathologist, virologist friend of mine who had a lab facility and all the cell cultures, microscopes and whatnot. And I said, hey, John, can I come over and torture your fibroblast cells with some magnetic coil stuff and see what happens to them? So I went over and did that with a soda instrument device. And by George, these fibroblast cells are normally elongated things what, you know, laying on the bottom of the culture disc. When we exposed them to these pulse ringing magnetic fields, they moved themselves into a spheroid ball and mm, hung themselves. Slow down now, wait a minute, start over. Yeah. You did what to blast what? Uh, there's these fibroblast cells, just okay. a normal repair cells, right. and a emergency patch that ends up making scar okay. tissue. We exposed them to these magnetic fields, pulse ringing magnetic uh -huh. fields, okay. and they converted over to something that looked embryonic type of cell. We thought, wow, this is phenomenal. So I ended up building these devices. By embryonic, you mean like new cells? Yeah, like very early on cells that you're during fetal development and whatnot. And those type of cells can divide and become other types of cells and they end up building the entire body. Mm -hmm. uh, they look very non, they call non-differentiated. By looking at the cell, you can see, you say, well, it's embryonic because it doesn't look like anything else, respectively. Oh, okay. There's all kinds of cells in the body. The list is rather immense, actually. Right. But early on, you have these embryonic looking cells. So we got something, uh, we took a, a well differentiated cell type called fibroblast cells, and we got to go back and look embryonic like. And that suddenly then explained how he got healed, in my mind anyway. We did some experiments to show that this happened. So I ended up then, I said, hey, this bigger is better. So we had this little dinky coil that worked on a small little area, and I said, well, let's make a big coil. Now, uh, before I had done this, there was a device called a papini, which was used for pain relief and also it had been rep reported to have regenerative effects on people's knees and cartilage problems and other infection problems. And so one thing led to another, and I really got heavily involved in this. I built the first prototypes machines, and we started experimenting and experimenting on horses real early on. And uh, from a patent search sort of point of view, we found that uh, this type of device induces electrical currents inside of the tissue because you're basically salt water. And once the electric eddy currents that this thing induces in you go over a certain value, it's very antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial. So quite often what happens is somebody gets racked, you know, or a horse gets badly damaged or hits the wall or, you know, something obviously things are wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, the horse is real tender now, it's swollen. 
Uh, there's inflammation, heat in the area from a localized infection that's occurring from the damage, all kinds of problems. Well, you bring our coil in, and you start off at a higher distance, like a foot away over the surface. You just move over the surface of the horse, and wherever there's a damaged area at, it shows up. The horse goes, woo, you know, and your ears will come back if mm -hmm, it's in pain and mm -hmm. whatnot. And so it's a diagnostic to find the location of the problem. And almost invariably, if you can find the location of the problem with the coil, that also means that you can really fix it. Now, I can't make medical claims and whatnot, because first off, the FTA type people. Second off, you really never know anything until you try it, and nothing's a cure-all. But there's a lot of these machines out there now, because I'm not the only manufacturer of this type of device. There's a lot of competitors out there now. Um, Just for animals? Uh, yes, basically a veterinarian. There's nothing for people? Uh, yes, some of these machines are used for people because basically animal flesh is animal flesh. Right. But when you start using it for people, then you have to start worrying about all kinds of rules and regulations, bureaucracies. If, say, a chiropractor wants to use one, in his state he may or may not be allowed by his chiropractic board to do it. Gotcha. A regular MD, of course, can't do it unless he's doing an IRB, an Institutional Review Board, because all kinds of federal rules and regulations, you know, the FDA. So veterinarian medicine is the way to go. So, Gary, really, this has a lot of different applications uh, at the racetrack, in the training barn. Vets could use this on so many different um, injuries. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you brought up was a localized infection from an injury. And mm -hmm. we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I want you to explain that because sure. you don't think of having an infection. You have a sore yeah. shoulder or something, but you don't think there's a low-grade infection in there. So let's talk about that okay. when we come back. Yeah, we're going to be back with Gary Wade in just a moment, so stay right where you are. <laughs> 